so today we are going to discuss about uh, the electrode materials that are basically used for future uh, battery operations particularly in the context of lithium ion batteries so these electrode materials which are like your cathode and anode are basically uh, so your active materials which are actively participating in the electrochemical or the chemical reaction and therefore the materials which uh, uh, constitute your electrode materials their properties are very important and what are the desired or required property that electrode material should fulfill of course it should have a high capacity so that means it can store more number of charges per unit volume and maybe per weight uh, definitely it should be a lighter weight and also smaller volume so that the specific energy or the energy density will be higher okay and uh, of course it should be mechanically strong and stable so mechanically as well as electrochemically so i should mention here as well as electrochemically also stable so mechanical and structural stability is required i mean both are required so uh, to achieve a longer cycle life so you can have uh, you can charge and discharge it uh, several times and that's why you need a better uh, mechanical properties as well as electrochemical properties so that means uh, uh, so what happens uh, during this charging and discharging process is so if you look at a typical lithium ion battery with this modern uh, lithium cobaltite for example so we have so we discussed it, discussed it yesterday so we have a lithium cobaltite cathode structure and this is a graphitic Uh, basically a graphite with uh, intercalated uh, lithium in it and this lithium cobaltite structure also has is a intercalated uh, material with layered structure in which <clears throat> lithium is like a intercalating uh, atom you have so during the charging and discharging process what happens is this lithium plus ions so they move from one electrode to the other electrode and this process is typically known as uh, lithiation or delithiation so the term that is sometimes used in the literature so lithiation or delithiation so that means when it is uh, going into the structure into the electrode so it is a lithiation process and when it is uh, getting out of that electrode and moving through the electrolyte to the other electrode so it is a delithiation process and uh, in this context you also uh, you can use this intercalation or deintercalation so this is the process that is happening during the charging and discharging of the battery and so what happens uh, during this process is like so you have basically a solid structure and when you are infusing uh, some species for example here lithium so it will affect the structure of the crystal structure of the material so of course when we take a uh, graphite so we said uh, like we have this uh, layered structure so it's a graphene layer and in the uh, in the planar direction and in the third direction it is like a van der waal weakly bonded uh, layered structure and therefore this lithium ions can go in it 
and similarly in the cobaltite lithium cobaltite structure so again it is a layered structure and within the layer so this lithium ions can go in uh, and this will definitely going to affect the structure of the material and that will lead to a change in volume so there will be the expansion of the lattice and it can lead to the change in volume so the material which can accommodate so so you can accommodate uh, some concentration of this lithium ion so you cannot keep on adding lithium forever otherwise it could lead to a stress in the material due to this volume change and that could crack up the material and that is why you need a good mechanical stability and uh, and these structures which are currently being used this lithium cobaltite structure or this uh, uh, this lithium transition metal oxide based basically those materials are really good in terms of their mechanical stability and that's why they are used and also they should not react too much with the electrolyte so electrolyte is again it has ionic species and uh, it has organic solvents so many other species are there in it so which can actually also react with the electrode material which is also undesirable so if they react so they will degrade these electrode materials and it will reduce the life cycle of the battery and therefore this mechanical stability and electrochemical stability they matter quite a lot for their longer uh, life and then also you need a uh, these uh, electrode materials they should also have a high conductivity as well uh, the ionic conductivity of the diffusion of ions should be high uh, and also electrically they should be able to also like if they want to collect the electron uh, so they should be able to do it at a very uh, so they should have good conductivity electrical conductivity as well so how a nanotechnology really helps for the future of this storage of energy in battery or what nanotechnology or nanomaterials what role it plays in or uh, is going to play in future uh, for this battery materials so particularly for electrode materials so if you look at so this is a plot so let me zoom it in okay so what you see here <coughs> is uh, again in, uh, we have a specific energy or energy density in the y axis and then what are the different materials the electrode materials that uh, can be used or can have high specific energy or energy density that means those who have larger capacity to store energy so here you see on the extreme left is your lithium ion and then comes the silicon this uh, lithium transition metal oxides like we talked about this cobaltite lithium cobaltite structure uh, again uh, the electrode material is used here silicon so again this lithium and so both the electrode materials as a lithium so instead of silicon so it can be so in lithium ion you have basically this graphitic lithium that is one of the electrode materials and here one can use also silicon as well instead of this graphite one can use silicon as well one can use even lithium as well so these are uh, like uh, proposed uh, electrode materials so one can even use silicon and an alloy of silicon and lithium so that is also possible uh, so this that means there are various electrode materials that are available 
with uh, which can compete with this existing lithium transition metal oxide and lithium or this graphitic lithium electrode materials so one can replace with either silicon or some uh, alloy of lithium and silicon and uh, even one can take lithium itself as uh, just pure lithium metal as one of the electrode materials uh, i mean why uh, uh, why this uh, uh, specific energy will be higher if, and why we can take these materials because as you can see so so when you look at the number of so if you want to increase the capacity so that means you have to increase the number of lithium ions that can be infused into the electrode material so the more the number of lithium ions that it can take so it can store more charges okay so without compromising its structure or compromising its uh, stability so when we discuss about this lithium carbon so this graphitic lithium electrode so what we saw is so the ratio of like how many atoms of lithium can go into this structure so the ratio was 1 is to 6 so if you have six carbon uh, atoms so it can take one uh, lithium atom so this is the ratio but if you look at lithium and silicon the ratio is actually quite uh, different so so one so the ratio is if you take one silicon atom so it can accommodate four lithium atom in its structure okay so so these lithiums are basically going into the voids or the empty spaces that are available within the lattice so that means if i take instead of taking a lithium and carbon based structure if i take a lithium and silicon electrode or an alloy of lithium and silicon so that can take or keep more lithium and that can increase the energy density or the capacity of the electrode and that's why the battery so so this alloy can host more number of lithium ions compared to your lithium or graphitic lithium but why it is not used so the main problem is if you look at this plot here so the biggest problem is as i said so when this lithium goes into the structure so it is changing the volume of the material so in the y axis what you say is a relative volume change so oh, in percentage and what is the ratio of lithium to host atomic ratio so the host uh, in uh, graphite is a carbon that is the host and when we talk about silicon the host is uh, of course uh, silicon host and lithium is the guest atom so as you can see the volume change when lithium is incorporated into this graphitic carbon is quite small okay so this is uh, this part here in the bottom of the plot here so this okay so you see here it's the volume change which quite small but as you go to silicon for example so silicon is here you can see here the so silicon can although it can incorporate more or it can host more number of lithium atoms but the change in volume due to this lithium going into the silicon system is quite large so almost like 400 so more than 300 percent this change and even let's say if you take only a metallic lithium and then you want to put i mean it is almost like 100 percent saturated with lithium kind of the host is lithium 
and then if you want to put more lithium in it so it is definitely going to change the volume like almost infinite okay in that sense so the volume change can be quite huge okay so therefore these are these large volume changes what it leads to is a lot of stress on the electrode materials because you are so you are not doing it once but we are doing it several times we are charging discharging charging discharging and this uh, volume is basically changing so it's expanding and shrinking and that leads to a really big stress on the material and normally what happens the material will break or will crack due to this stress and that is not ideal so so for example if you take the silicon so a process what happens so if this uh, you infuse lithium in it so you do the lithiation process so as i said so when we put lithium into the host material so you can we can call it lithiation so due to the lithiation and delithiation process the volume change is like more than 300% so i can write down so 300% volume change so in case of this silicon host material and that will lead to a stress on the material on the electrode material and it will crack or normally what happens it is called pulverization so the lithium uh, or the silicon host material due to uh, lithiation process will pulverize uh, yeah this is what i have mentioned so it will pulverize the electrode and and that means it, it is just breaks into small pieces just due to the mechanical stress and then the electrode material is gone uh, and therefore people are i mean industry is still not using the silicon material although it is quite promising or will have a higher energy density or capacity to store this uh, lithium atoms so another problem also happens is so one is this pulverization so so let's say when we talk about this lithiation and delithiation process in silicon so it leads to a stress and cracks the structure so it pulverizes so breaks into really small pieces and another thing also happens that uh, so you always have this solid uh, so your electrode and electrolyte interface and normally you have a solid electrolyte interface material that can also form due to some interaction between your electrolyte and your electrode and this this during the cycling process charging and discharging process that also get damaged in some of these electrode materials and that is why the industry is still like using this uh, graphitic lithium structure and this lithium transition metal oxide as a cathode material uh, and they are the most popular material still okay so now the question is so if these are the challenges for other electrode materials so how nanotechnology actually going to help in this case or basically how nanomaterial the synthesis uh, will help in addressing these challenges and indeed it can actually do that so this is uh, let me again zoom in at this figure okay so what you see is so here uh, a group they are using a silicon nanostructures to address all those challenges what we talked about so this pulverization this uh, uh, cracking mechanical cracking or this interaction with the electrolyte which can damage uh, during during the cycling or the charging and discharging process okay so these issues they address with really novel 
<clears throat> nanostructures so the first so they call it like they they have developed various silicon electrodes uh, and so starting with this generation 1 for example so they did it in 2007 so what they did is instead of taking this bulk silicon so you can take silicon nanowires okay so just replace your silicon with silicon nanowires and what happens due to this nanostructuring this volume change there will be a volume change but this volume change since these are very small nanostructures so in the bulk this pulverization or the mechanical stress can lead to cracking but in nanowires you normally don't will you will not see that kind of mechanical stress because now the volume change will be very small because the volume itself is small you know you are taking in nano scale dimension and therefore these these are not really going to pulverize or they are not going to break up into small pieces when it is uh, when lithium goes into it uh, or this lithiation and delithiation process happens so even they develop it a little bit with uh, in this core cell nanowires so they used this core cell nanowires where uh, they took a crystalline silicon core and this amorphous silicon cell and basically the crystalline silicon core provided a good pathway for conductivity electron conductivity uh, and amorphous silicon cell uh, they claim can be can be used for uh for this uh, incorpor incorporating lithium in it uh and so they kept on trying different uh synthesizing different structures so for example they so later on they synthesized this hollow nanospheres okay uh and i mean all this nanostructuring actually helps uh, or improves these challenges which i mentioned uh so basically by by nanostructuring so you can stop this pulverization because this uh mechanical stress that due to the volume change that was taking place in bulk silicon is not going to happen in nanostructures however there was always a uh, issue with this solid your electrode and electrolyte interface where you create some kind of interface uh, like an alloy kind of uh, different structure and which can actually this uh, during the cycling and re, uh, during the discharge and charging process so this interface gets damaged and uh, to address that issue what they did is so then like in 2000 uh, around 2012 so this this is kind of a breakthrough point at that time so they used this double walled nanotubes so what this double walled nanotube means so they used a silicon here it is a silicon s i o x uh nanotube so the core is silicon and the cell is silicon dioxide now this silicon dioxide is kind of uh, chemically non reactive to this electrochemical or your electrolyte and therefore it protects the silicon although it does not affect in lithiation and delithiation process but it protects uh, your Uh, solid uh, this electrolyte interface and therefore this during the cycling and uh, or during the charging and discharging it is not it does not get damaged so even it can be improved what they did is they take uh, the silicon so now if you look at this uh, gen uh, generation 5 they call it a generation 5 nanostructure or electrode material so what they have devised here is a core cell or yolk and cell kind of 
nano particle system uh, so that means the silicon is now uh, covered with a amorphous carbon material again this carbon will be like a protecting layer for the silicon okay so so that this interface uh, interface that you create between your electrolyte and your electrode material this is so the active electrode material is silicon and carbon is acting like a just like a protection for it and then uh, people also worked on the same uh, idea and what they did is so for example in this case uh, so they used the silicon microparticles and coated with with self healing coating so that means this uh, so so all these are based on some kind of chemistry where you functionalize with uh, materials which uh, basically even if they damage so they can repair themselves quite well uh, and then recently what people are actually doing is uh, so again so so you can create these different nanostructures and you can functionalize it or coat it with different uh, materials to to address like the challenges like uh, you can make it electrochemically stable so you can make it mechanically stable and you can uh, prevent or you can increase the life cycle of the electrode material just by simple uh, using nanostructuring of the material okay so so again also you can create this hierarchical structures so these also have certain advantages as well and another interesting uh, thing what people also tried is like they used uh, this graphene cages so you can form a graphene cages and you can put your active electrode in it uh, and what happens when you put so you make this cage like structure so like if you look at this this one here so you can make a cage like graphene structure and then you put your active silicon material in it and what happens even if let's say uh, there can be some damage or some uh, stress on it and even if it breaks or cracks it will still remain within the cage so it is not going to mix with the electrolyte and just gone forever so if you can keep it within this graphene cage so it will remain still inside it and still so you can increase basically the life cycle of the electrode material and moreover this graphene will uh, provide really a good uh, so graphene as you know it has a really good mechanical uh, stability okay so so it is not going to break too fast i mean it will remain uh, or it will keep it structure quite intact and within that case whatever is happening the silicon can break but still can participate in the electrochemical process and moreover this graphene can also provide a really good conductivity as well okay so so graphene is kind of uh, addressing uh, so it is acting like a protective layer it is acting uh, providing a pathway for conductivity and uh, it is also keeping the electrode material mechanically stable okay so these are the so this is like different structures based on silicon just purely based on silicon where instead of using a bulk silicon you have used a nanostructure silicon and just by doing that you can address many of the challenges uh, which were uh, actually kind of stopped silicon from uh, from using it as electrode materials although it is much better compared to your graphite system but still these things are let's say 
not industrially kind of uh, used yet. I mean, there are many other issues which uh, needs to be addressed. So, for example, this synthesis, I mean, these kind of synthesis are sometimes expensive. Okay, so uh, it is not, so in the lab, probably you can do this kind of synthesis easily, but industrial scale synthesis of this kind of nanostructures is still a challenge. And that is what actually people are trying to address how you can uh, synthesize these nanostructures in an industrial scale. And that is when these materials can be used in real uh, devices in the market. But this is an ongoing process and most likely in future, uh, probably the carbon based, the graphite based electrodes will be replaced with the silicon based <clears throat> electrode materials. So even people are now trying instead of silicon, so one can use germanium as well. And people are also exploring uh, tin. So different uh, transition metals also people are trying to use instead of silicon, uh, which will be probably Again, the reason is uh, which one will be more uh, industrially applicable. So this concept basically has opened a new pathway or new technique to use uh, materials which were not uh, supposed to work in their bulk form. So in the bulk form, silicon, germanium or tin, you cannot really use for electrode materials, but by nanostructuring, so you can use them for uh, really better electrode materials in these devices, in batteries. So another material is actually also, so let's look at this figure here. So lithium, as I said, lithium in the bulk form, so just pure lithium metal can also be used as an electrode material. But then this volume change again is quite high and therefore you always have this problem of uh, cracking and stress on the material which is uh, which reduces its life cycle and therefore what people are trying is again to provide a a, a support for lithium where you can so keep or store this lithium uh, easily and then you can, uh, so that it can participate in the, I mean, one of the reason lithium is quite reactive. So it reacts uh, really fast. So th that is why the life cycle is reduced. So this electrode material in the bulk form will react very fast and will degrade quite fast. And uh, people are trying to, oh, protect, um, use lithium, but protect it in certain way so that you can use it as an electrode material. And, uh, and what are the different ways? So what they are doing is basically uh, you can use some uh, functional groups. Okay, so you can attach some functional group so that uh, they become uh, less reactive, uh, but uh, I mean, in, in, in some electrolyte, so you can take special electrolyte and uh, use uh, some functionalization like shown here. So you can add some additives so that it does not become that re reactive, but that is not really the best way to, to solve the issue. So another issue normally with lithium, what happens is like, uh, this lithium electrode and in the, so if you are using an electrolyte, a solid electrolyte, for example, so what happens, this lithium ion can move through it. So it is kind of diffusing through it and it can form this dendritic structures. Okay. So dendritic structure means, uh, if I can plot here, let me see. Okay, so let me plot it here. So, uh, so if I have, 
this is my lithium let's say and this is your electrolyte okay so when this diffusion happens so it can form this lithium can form this dendritic structure okay and this structure will grow over certain time and then what happens so here you have your uh, cathode so that means through the so there will be really a, a conducting path through the electrolyte from your anode to your cathode so due to this formation of dendritic structure okay so that will lead to a short circuit of your device so this dendritic structure normally will provide a pathway for electron conductivity through it so it will be a short circuit and your electrochemical cell or battery will not function anymore and that is actually a big problem with lithium electrode and that is why people are trying to use a different uh, like uh, like make composites where you can use lithium but somehow protect it so this dendritic structures do not form and that is why they are doing this functionalization with uh, different uh, materials probably it will stop the growth of dendritic structure but that is not that uh, successful and what people also what they have tried is uh, so this nanoscale interfacial engineering so something nanoscale interfacial engineering means what they are doing is uh, so they have again like in silicon we have a protective layer like carbon was used as one of the protective layers so here they are using a carbon coating uh, which can be which can act as a protection layer for this lithium as well so in this kind of structure so this corrugated structure kind of protects uh, the underlying lithium uh, when this lithium de uh, is deposited and also it, it protects uh, also this coating provides a protection from the uh, so there will be no direct interface between your electrolyte and your lithium so that this dendritic growth can be really stopped uh, so now another way here uh, in this figure they are trying is uh, taking this reduced graphene oxide okay so this reduced graphene oxide is also like a layered structure they are making and then within this gap so lithium kind of uh, liquid lithium metal can flow in it and then uh, you can store it and so this re reduced graphene oxide is providing like a channel to store your lithium electrode material and again this reduced graphene oxide is basically pretty much like graphene oxide uh, although with a reduced quality but nevertheless it uh, works quite well uh, in terms of high conductivity and mechanical stability uh, and it provides a good channel to store your lithium material electrode material so this is where this nano engineering or nanotechnology is helping so that where you can use lithium as an electrode material instead of i mean which was not possible in the bulk form at all now again this uh, one can also take this hollow carbon cell with uh, this gold seed kind of nanoparticles small gold nanoparticles which act as seed where this lithium can go, grow or can go and uh, nucleate and form a, this hollow structure and again uh, this carbon structure will provide a good protecting layer so in this context people have also tried so these are very specific designs okay so not so i mean uh, still not industrial friendly yet 
so people are also trying instead of breaking this uh, complicated cell structures because these are all based on some kind of chemistry where you have to create a hollow structure so instead of that people are also trying to use carbon nanotubes for examples so you can use carbon nanotubes uh, or like what are the available uh, nanostructures already that is produced or mass produced and using those uh, with composites so you can make composites or let's say we can call it a nano composites okay uh, in that way you can uh, create or use uh, this lithium plus this other uh, nanostructure materials which is providing uh, a protective layer to your lithium electrode material and these are so different so nanostructure or nanoscale engineering is really helping in uh, where you can use lithium as one of the electrode materials so then sulfur is also another material that is also uh, people are working on it so sulfur again uh, is again in, based on this nanostructure so you can use this graphene cage you can put the sulfur material in it so people are also creating these uh, fibers so carbon nanofibers uh, where sulfur is uh, introduced and acting as electrode material uh, even like core cell like structure so they have made again this here titanium dioxide is used uh, as a protecting layer okay so different ways you can use uh, so sulfur i mean one of the challenge with sulfur is like when you want to attach it on a electrode on a material so it does not stick so well okay so that is known as uh, like you cannot really uh, the uh, sulfur does not wet the surface uh, of a material and it gets detached quite easily so therefore people are using uh, some functionalization or you can do some uh, coating or uh, like you can make your or substrate like a how do you say like a uh, you you use some kind of coating or functionalization so that uh, or you make it charged like a polar uh, molecules you put at put uh, attached to the substrate so the sulfur get attached quite easily and can remain there or does not get detached so there are different ways uh, this helps in Uh, where sulfur can also be used as an electrode material i mean these are all materials for the future uh, battery materials so in uh, to summarize so what one can say is so we can take <clears throat> so synthesis of nanostructured materials is really key here so how you are going to synthesize these uh, materials and incorporate this existing materials which <clears throat> uh, can be used or have potentials but they are not used in the bulk form because of uh, these several limitations i mentioned and this nanostructuring so you can use 0d 1d or 2d or even 3d nanostructured materials uh, to along with this electrode materials for your battery uh, for your devices uh, and these are advantages and limitations and another limitation so so of course there are many advantages but there are also limitations which are actually uh, one needs to work open so that these electrode materials can really be used in a real um, devices batteries in the market i mean one of the reason is again uh, when we are taking a nano structure so this surface to volume ratio can increase okay so the surface sites are more and then so this can be advantages or can be disadvantages so now if let's say on the surface you can attach more sites okay so if if let's say some you you want to increase the conductivity which is based on the surface conductivity 
then now by nano structuring you can increase that conductivity but now when you are increasing the surface so then there is also a possibility of this uh, the surface is much more reactive okay and you never know how it is reacting with the electrolyte material and that is also another challenge so therefore uh, there is also research going on what kind of uh, any new electrolyte material that can also be used together with this nanostructured uh, electrode materials okay so this part we are not discussing here we were only discussing about the electrode materials how one can achieve uh, or explore new electrode materials using nanostructure